And uh, Jared, are you around to tell us a little bit about what China's got going on as well as some other things this month? Oh, yes. Yeah. In fact, it seems that November was China's month where they kind of came in and upstaged everybody just a little bit in what they were doing. And China's lunar ambitions uh, are a little bit different than the United States', is, um, where the United States is more about sustainability, while China is more about the technological development that they can do uh, for their missions. And going back a little bit, on October 31st, we had the launch of Myang Ten, uh, which was a science module that is going to uh, be used, uh, or actually is being used on board already. Um, it launched on that ultra powerful Long March 5 rocket. Uh, just looking at this absolute massive vehicle heading on up. This is China's heavy lift rocket, so essentially the equivalent of a Delta IV Heavy or a Falcon Heavy here in the United States. Um, it did eventually make it to the core module of Tiangong, which is China's space station that they have in orbit right now that is crewed. They do have six people on board of it right now. And we'll actually talk a little bit about that crew uh, expanding once we get to it. It was moved around on station on November 3rd, just four days after arrival. They went ahead and uh, detached it from one portion of the station and moved it over to another, essentially docked it on the 31st to make sure everything was working over a couple of days and then put it where it was supposed to go, where it then deployed a massive solar array. And much like the International Space Station, you can actually go outside and see Tiangong flying over while it's in orbit. So feel free to go on a website like heavens-above.com and uh, check it out. And you can actually get those predictions to see when it will go uh, right over you. And Chris, this uh, great view of it right here, a bit sped up uh, with that time lapse. We don't actually dock things that, even, even China doesn't dock things that fast uh, in space. Everybody obeys the laws of physics just the same, no matter where you come from. Now, the booster of that rocket, the first stage, uh, ended up getting this tweet from the U.S. Space Command, which to say that they can confirm that the People's Republic of China Long March 5 rocket body re-entered the atmosphere over the southern central Pacific at 404 Mountain Time on November the 4th. For details on the uncontrolled re-entry impact location, we once again <laughs> refer you to the People's Republic of China. I really like that tweet because it just sounded like U.S. Space Command was like, stop calling us, go talk to them. They're the ones who did it. So just, just stop messing up our phones and just go talk to the people who actually did it. Now, Obviously, if you have a space station, you've got to keep it very well supplied. For the International Space Station, we have a multitude of vehicles to do that. Uh, but for China, they have one, they're Tianzhou, and they actually had a launch of Tianzhou 5 on November 12th. Uh, now, what was so impressive about this flight is that China is uh, essentially reaching a level that the United States and Russia are at in <clears throat> operations with their spacecraft, where Tianzhou 5 only took one orbit, so 90 minutes from launch to dock at Tiangong One. Um, that is very impressive for somebody just entering into the game. Um, you know, even about a decade ago, it would often take a Soyuz uh, or a uh, supply ship to take about three days from launch to arrival at the International Space Station. But now we're doing it in one orbit. So I guess uh, if you really want to get your in and out burger still warm while it's up there, we can do that now for you. Um, and uh, just kind of looking at Tianjiao 5 here, detaching from its Long March rocket, and then eventually approaching the Tiangong station here, which you can see uh, over on the right with Tianjiao 5 on the left right there. There it is, a beautiful spacecraft in orbit there around the Earth. So drop it off a couple tons of supplies, fuel, air, water, food, other things that the astronauts are going to need throughout their time, science experiments as well. And then there's a big one just a couple of days ago, which the next launch was Shenzhou 15. Now this launch was a crewed launch and it occurred on November 29th. We have Commander Feb Ju Long, Operator Den Quing Meng, and System Operator Zhang Lu uh, flying in uh, that Shenzhou spacecraft right there. This is pretty exciting because these are views that normally we don't get 
as uh, observers uh, outside of China. So this was pretty exciting to see them getting loaded into their Shenzhou and then finally launching. And launches we get to see all the time, but of course, we've got to make it look good nowadays since everybody's stepping up their visual games. So take a look at this shot that they got. Mm. That's wow. a mighty nice one yeah. of their ambitions there, yeah. in case you're wondering what China is yeah. aiming for. Um, now, Shenzhou 15 also rendezvoused with Tiangong in one orbit as well. So again, uh, just showing the technical competency uh, of China in that they are not so they're not a bunch of pushovers in their, their spacecraft. They're actually very, very good at what they do. Um, and they joined the current Tiangong crew, which is Chen Dong, Liu Yang, and Cam Zhuzhi on board. And those six are going to stay uh, together for a little bit. And then eventually the crew of Shenzhou 14 are going to come back to Earth. Uh, and we wish all six of them the best of luck while they are up there in space and a safe journey home uh, for all of them as well. So this is China starting its continuous presence, its its own continuous human presence uh, in space. And China has mentioned uh, to corporate interests and also Europe that if they would like to jump on board as well, you're more than welcome to come along. Now, Rocket Lab uh, for our next launch, they attempted to recover their booster. Uh, they are attempting to try out reusability. Uh, they essentially did it not necessarily because uh, they want to actually re uh, end up reusing them like SpaceX does, but because they figured out that manufacturing the boosters takes a very long time for them. So this would actually <clears throat> save on that and help build up the cadence that they have there for their flights. Uh, now, of course, Rocket Lab, very well known for their cheeky names of their flights. This one was called Catch Me If You Can. It launched on November 4th, and Rocket Lab is doing a very interesting way of catching their rockets where they have a parachute that is then snagged by a helicopter. But unfortunately, on this flight, they could not get the helicopter close enough to catch it. It did land in the ocean, and they are going to take it back and study it as well. We move on. We actually come home to California where we say goodbye to the Atlas rocket series. And this was on November 10th. This was the final west coast atlas 5 so you either there or you're just not seeing one or you have to go to uh the cape down in florida to catch it um i was lucky enough that i was able to be there and watch it leave uh earth <laughs> forever um and it was lofting the jpss2 weather satellite for nasa and the national oceanic and atmospheric administration which we see it separating right here uh also had a special special experiment on board called lofted now lofted is actually a inflatable heat shield so uh, you were hearing chris earlier talking about testing orion's heat shield uh, for lunar return speeds lofted here was actually to test if you can have a inflatable heat shield come back from speeds on orbit around the Earth. Um, and an inflatable heat shield can be a lot more lightweight than a traditional heat shield. And that would be very helpful for going to places like Mars or Venus. And it turns out Lofted worked exactly as expected. So successful test with that, although we're gonna take a look at the data uh, coming over from that. Then we move to the East Coast, out to uh, one of my favorite named launch places, Wallops Island, uh, <laughs> where the uh, Northrop Grumman Antares 230 ended up launching the Northrop Grumman Cygnus NG-18, which they had named the SS Sally Ride in honor of the astronaut. This happened on November 7th. This is a supply ship to the International Space Station, although there was a little bit of a problem after the deployment of the SS Sally Ride, where one of its solar arrays actually did not fully unfurl. And in fact, we got some really great photos of it from the International Space Station uh, in our next bit right here, uh, where we can actually see uh, the array sort of hung up on itself. Uh, and if we move to there, they are, there we go. So that's a bit of a lopsided looking spacecraft because it is, it should have two solar arrays there, but only one deployed. Luckily, the Cygnus uh, resupply craft only need one to operate. So we're going ahead and went to the International Space Station. A nice close up there shows us that there is some sort of debris sitting there that has caused the solar array to not deploy. So uh, Northrop Grumman's going to be taking a look at that issue to see whether it was something from Cygnus or something from their Antares rocket on the way up. Um, but overall, it got there. 
got the supplies there and it's going to be doing what it needs to once they release it in just a couple of months. Now, SpaceX, usually we talk a lot about SpaceX, but unfortunately, but, you know, China kind of upstaged SpaceX with some of their stuff uh, this month. Uh, and also SpaceX kind of slowed down a little bit too. I guess once they hit the record of 48 in a year, I guess they just decided to kind of lean back and uh, take in the rest of the year. But we did have five launches this year with that one on November 12th, hitting that mythical 52 launch mark that SpaceX have been wanting to reach in 2022. They are now at 54 launches, still several on the books for the rest of 2022. So we'll see if they can do it. I think if they can hit 60, uh, I think it'll be right around 60 is where they're gonna be at with that. That'd be a nice good number for them. Now they did send up the final uh, cargo dragon, new fresh cargo dragon that's going to be coming up in this next uh, next beautiful shot here from the International Space Station of that vehicle. Uh, also, another cargo resupply ship. Uh, SpaceX will no longer be manufacturing the cargo dragons. They'll actually just be reusing them because they're designed to be reused. Um, so, and they've only also got one more crew dragon left to build as well. And then SpaceX is going to have an entire fleet of crew and cargo dragons to fly on a reusable basis. So very excited to see that. And then of course, we have our own little launch place here in Southern California at Vandenberg. It's Vandenberg Space Force Base. And you've got a little bit coming up this month before the end of the year on December 15th at 3.46 a.m. local. We have the Surface Water and Ocean Topography Mission, or SWAT. Uh, it is going to be measuring the heights of bodies of water with a precision of one centimeter or better from orbit. And this is a NASA mission collaborating with some European groups as well. And then also on December 28th at 10.58 p.m. local time, Eros C3. This is a military satellite for the Israeli Ministry of Defense. Uh, on December 28th, that launch for Eros C3, that one is confirmed that the first stage will be returning to landing zone four at uh, Vandenberg Space Force Base, what we call a return to launch site landing. Uh, so that means that the first stage will actually come back and land uh, within a couple thousand feet of the launch pad. So uh, if you've ever wanted to see a rocket go up and then about eight minutes later, come back down right in front of you, uh, that will be a launch most certainly to keep your eye on. And of course, I always recommend uh, websites like Spaceflight Now or NASA Spaceflight have launch schedules on there. Uh, launch schedules change all the time. So before <laughs> deciding to make a trip, make sure that you check it day by day, sometimes even hour by hour on the day of. Uh, so that way you know what the status of that launch is. And that is your out to launch for November of 2022. <clears throat> Well, a busy month once again. Thank you, Jared, for that fascinating report.